40% of patients report feeling confused or unsure about their consent forms. Effective informed consent not only protects patients but also builds trust, improves outcomes and ensures that patients are true partners in their own care. Welcome to another episode of our podcast series on mastering communication skills for healthcare professionals. I am Dr. Simran and today we are diving into a crucial topic for ethical medical practice that is informed consent. Today we are thrilled to have Dr. Vishal Parmar with us, an expert whose passion for clear communication is transforming patient care. Dr. Parmar, welcome. Thank you. Informed consent is more than just a signature on a form. It's a meaningful conversation that empowers patients and ensures that they fully understand their choices. Practical strategies share real life scenarios and discuss how to navigate the complexities of informed consent. Dr. Parmar will help us uncover effective ways to ensure our patients are truly informed and comfortable with their decisions. So starting with the basics. So uh, what are the core principles of informed consent and why are they so critical in patient care? Informed, the, the most important principles is a transparency and clarity. Informed, informed consent must be there before doing any intervention, be it diagnostic or therapeutic or any other thing. Whenever we are going to take consent, we must explain about the possible procedure, its outcome, its possible complications, and how this particular therapeutic procedure or diagnostic procedure is going to change the patient's management. This informed consent must be in a language which patient can understand better, possibly in a regional or local language. And in between the aspect, if patient feel that they want another option or explore another option, so depending on the urgency of situation, we must provide them. These are some basic aspects. And uh, in case some mentally unstable patient or some minor, we must include a senior caregiver in consent. And every consent should be taken in return with at least minimum two witnesses. If possible, we can record the, all these audio visuals when we are taking consent. These are all the basic things. What communication techniques can help ensure patients truly understand their options? See, many times the, when something, some procedure is going to happen or we are proposing some procedure or surgeries or any diagnostic procedure, whatever. Take example of a lumbar puncture, CSF. See, the, there is a sometimes, there is a different preoccupied conception in parents or patients' mind. And <clears throat> so we must address it. See, the, what is important for the parents, we must address it. What is important for as a healthcare professional, we must address it. And with this all should be addressed together. Take for example, in lumbar puncture, the parents often feel that when in pediatric, okay, ko mein problem nahi. So we said, no, kabhi problem hota nahi. But, aisa nahi hai ki 100% aap yeah, it is very rare complication. But you cannot say that, nahi hoga, no. Yeah, it might be little bit risk, but during our experience, we have done so many procedures. We haven't seen any case. So let us go for the positive and let us see why we are going to do it. Because if we, we as, suppose we lumbar puncture, kab karte pediatric mein, jab when we are suspecting some brain infection or some brain condition. Yes. 
this procedure will help us to know whether is there any infection inside the brain or not if yes then what kind of infection may be tuberculosis may be bacterial or viral or any other thing and it will help us to guide how long we need to continue treatment because uh sometimes it might be many medicine find it difficult to take entry inside the brain because of some structure problem like blood brain barrier we should not expand the blood brain barrier uh, uh not properly educated but so in that case we need to prolong the treatment if we want to treat some brain infection in if is there or if in there are many condition in which uh, other chemicals like glucose and proteins or other uh, other proteins a uh, level might help us to suspect or confirm any particular disease in which help uh, help us to guide the treatment so for this aspect we have to do this thing yeah your concern is right uh, there might be some initial lower back pain or in very rare cases they are they may have some problem with walking but it's very less likely we haven't seen it because in that case if a mother uh, we can if mother is present in front of us we can ask them how your baby was born or how uh, do you know anyone in your family who is given birth by cesarean section in the same cesarean section they have given spinal anesthesia and in spinal anesthesia they are they have given the uh, spinal anesthesia by uh, with lumbar puncture only right so you can explain like this so that is how uh, we can address their concern we can explain what are our perspective and we can inform them and when they are fully agree and they should write a concern and we go ahead yeah we should explain about the some consequences also like it is possible that uh, if a child cannot uh, it is possible that sometimes procedure may fail like lumbar puncture can get traumatic it happens in that case we need to reintubate after the 48 hours uh, or there are always some pros and cons in, in many procedures right so we need to explain it whenever it is necessary to explain according to the oh, parents patients intellectual level that was and, uh, really uh, like an understanding wherein the doctor needs to understand that how much does the patient knows and to inform him accordingly that yes you know this much now this will be added to your information or your knowledge so that you can sign of consent yeah see what happen in consent many time na uh, this consent regarding the diagnostic or a surgical procedure it is not very familiar condition to them and uh, it is very unusual and very panic condition like as always I, before i have mentioned that the parents may not be able to catch up all this information at the same time and uh, so summary is important if they don't catch up proper information or in some case state my understand uh, what needs to do but still they might be unable to take a decision so at this time at that particular time we should not force them unless it's a life saving procedure in the life saving condition some many in emergency life saving condition legally doctor are protected the consent not required if you if someone is dying and you are intubating him so it's not meant that you are you need to take a consent right yes so it is a by law a by law we, do, we as a doctor protected but apart from life threatening condition consent is required and it is not possible to have a consent with one setting only they meet you you have a discussion you discuss all their concern you address why it is important for you or your kid or anyone then they go back then they meet their some relatives or some leaders then they find might be second opinion other resources go through so if possible help them with this stuff it will help us to build their trust many times uh, i like a bit of we need to give a proper information resources if they want us to meet their distant cousins or their community leader or their religious leader uh, why it is necessary many times they may have some superiors 
in the family senior person in the family they want to meet us so it is our duty to arrange the second meet for the appropriate concern uh with, with the appropriate concern person now after then we can go ahead with the concern after all this concern must be in a written there should not be an oral concern oral concern exist nahi karti unless it is some uh minor procedure as like a uh, implied consent is attached with this all this uh and like patient opd mein aata hai to is okay wo consent dete hain ki aap usse check karo usme written consent ki zarurat nahi hai but uh, any intervention hamesha oral consent is important so i'm sorry hamesha written written consent is important so better uh let them sign with two two person who act as evidence so written consent is important that's all that's actually uh, very important because uh, there are ethical considerations that need to be taken care written uh, consents will be of help then because oral communications are nowhere uh, noted down but written communications as you mentioned in your earlier episode as well that written communication everything needs to be in writing so that things are clear on the doctors every time i say many times uh, i think every each and every different transaction require different consent don't we don't have we should not do the bundle consent for everything so try to do like this anesthetic concern is different surgical concern is different procedure concern is different there should be a different concept for each and every procedure so uh, when dealing with high risk procedures how should doctors approach the consent process see in that case we must explain about the risk versus benefit ratio and possible out high risk procedure sees uh if you example that a high risk procedure in pediatric i would say critical cardiac surgery sometime baby born with the complex synoptic congenital heart disease and in this case to save baby we must do some intervention like transposition get a get artist baby born we must do aortic septoplasty to save baby life but as it involves a cardiac surgery it is always risky also so in that case if we don't do surgery survival will be very difficult if we do the surgery there is a risk but there are chances of the survival so it is always to explain the risk versus benefit ratio what if we do and what if we don't do and what if we do what are the chances in coming future anyhow whatever money i need to spend but i have to save it but sometime they let the open clarity that how this procedure is going to benefit if after this procedure my near and dear one are going to live or die so this to answer they need it from us and we need to explain it very ethically without giving any false expectation so in a high risk consider and uh, we must explain the what after the procedure in cardiac surgery the icu stay is important it is not about just a surgery only surgery might take over 40% and 40 to 50% rest recovery it depending on the how the next few days after surgery a person or patient or baby is spent in icu without any major complications so that will define the outcome so this everything should be explained risk versus benefit ratio with honest confession will give the patient a better understanding of what exactly he should do and what option is best for him because sometimes even 
we as healthcare professionals are not left with many options so explaining that option with empathy and compassion maybe might help yeah. them there are no perfect decisions right there are no perfect yeah. decisions there are positive decisions they we take decisions by thinking positive way and realistic and that will help us you know there's a core principle of ethics uh, do good do don't harm respect autonomy and do justice so any consent of any procedure requires to follow the ethical principles autonomy means we need to accept autonomy of a person suppose one is a patient and one don't want to do surgery and we should respect his autonomy because it is his life his choice many times many interventions are going to do more harm than benefit that's why sir in many times despite of indication everything we don't do surgery like without anesthetic or physician fitness surgeon don't do surgery because why because we might do the surgery but if he if it is going to harm the normal hemodynamic condition of the patient then surgery won't be benefited right okay so do good do, don't harm then yes. most of all justice because as i know the if one person in the family get sick the whole family either get sick mentally emotionally economically and socially definitely they get sick so while taking important decision in medical field we must to do consider what their immediate relatives are thinking what is that collective decision many times patient might refuse in some life saving procedure because in india many adults think that think that we should not waste money blah 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 but many relatives or their kids or their same family want to do it because for them it will be ethical dilemma if you don't do it or something happen there might be a emotional burden on them so in that case we should take consider each and every person the family and go according to mutual decision like uh, in some catholic christian community they don't accept the blood products from outside yes many time it's difficult to convince them if it is life saving you cannot go against them but in that case we might invite the community leader we might invite the uh, religious figures the religious leader to come and discuss with him and we need to take a proper way right we should respect their belief also and we should respect what is the need of a blood transfusion so such kind of principles comes between the uh, consent and procedure we need to follow it so moving ahead with this how can healthcare professionals create an environment where patients feel comfortable asking questions and expressing concerns see most important is the inviting the open question and addressing them without judging them i always mention that there are not the silly question there are the silly answers okay and uh, most of all we as a medical person at trained in english with english medium in india be it a medical person or a healthcare administration english is become a very common language used in interprofessional communication in healthcare profession and uh, lots of medical terms we are using in our day to day practice 
such kind of lingo is common between us as a uh, as a healthcare professional like many medical terms but uh, while we are communicating with the lehm in the parents we must find out the what are the common words common normal local language word which we can extend them right so avoiding medical terms as much as possible asking their concern expressing their concern addressing their concern checking understanding frequently and above all documentation everything it is will help us let them speak bolne do and many times uh, many person have faith on some particular doctors they do that particular doctor may be from their community from their religion from their regional language background pensis we need to keep that particular doctor in low that doctor might be associated with the hospital or not but whenever it is visible we need to keep the keep him the low because this is a person who is going uh, to help us to build the trust gap between the hospital or doctor healthcare professional and the patient or parents so that is important this is not a rocket science this is about the basic common sense and we need to practice this our time speaking is not that everyone don't know anything doesn't mean everyone knows everything but it is about the how to practice you have to calm down that's all it's not about the i know everything it's about it's not about the i can do everything it's about the what is right and what we can do better taking everyone with us that is what important so that we do not want unnecessary uh tantrums and complications in our medical practice because everyone wants a peace of mind with better out so uh, what are the best practices for ensuring that the informed consent process meets both legal and ethical standards audit by audit team taking regular feedback from the patient taking regular feedback from the nurses taking regular feedback from the doctors and audit continuous quality improvement will help us to make to make this better practice better and better we see it is not possible that we can be perfect or we don't make mistake obviously we as a human we as a individual we as a team we as a hospital team everywhere we are bound to make a mistake but we need to make sure we don't make the same mistake again and again so it is a quality con- quality control and continuous training because what happens uh staff the junior staff or senior staff in particular one hospital the person comes and goes comes and goes so we cannot expect a coming person to work in the same manner like the previous employee used to work it is a duty of organization to train him repeat it time to time so we can build up a culture that uh, everyone comes on the same line when it comes to the communicating with each other and patient because that will show most of the problem so uh thank you dr parmar for sharing your insights on informed consent remember effective consent is about clear communication and building trust if you enjoyed today's podcast don't forget to subscribe our podcast for more valuable insights and stay tuned for our next episode where we will explore breaking bad news delivering difficult diagnosis with compassion dr parmar it's been a pleasure having you with us 
your practical okay. insights and real world examples have been incredibly valuable thank you for joining us today and contributing to this important discussion thank you that's it for today's episode on informed consent we hope yes, you yes. found our discussion enlightening and practical keep refining your communication skills and continue to provide exceptional care thanks for tuning in Thank you.